So today's obviously the PGA League uh, Masters class, and we have uh, Doug Wirt, who is our PGA uh, Junior League Regional Manager, along with Josh Tremblay, who is uh, our section president, along with a major award winner on, on, on about most every, I think for his career is over, he'll get every award for sure. But, uh, you know, he's, he's won several awards here in the section, BJ Professional Year and um, Leader of the Year. So, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to both of you. If we have questions while we're, while we're in this, please put it in the chat. I'll be kind of monitoring the chat. And uh, if we have questions, I'll kind of bring them to Josh and Doug. So without that, gentlemen, take it away. Josh, why don't we start with you um, introducing yourself a little bit more, um, share your experiences with PGA Junior League, and um, and then um, just so if it's okay with everybody, I have a short presentation, you know, uh, to share with you to cover uh, changes for PGA Junior League in 2021, um, and then introduce all of you to. Uh, our new offering, which we've been piloting for a couple of years in other states, uh, PGA Family Cup. Yeah, thanks, Doug. That sounds great. Um, I'm Josh Tremblay. Uh, been now at Springfield for 11 years, starting year number 12, and uh, got started with PGA Junior League here back in 2012. Uh, was one of the four professionals that kind of got it piloted um, along with Country Club of Fairfax. Uh, Woodmont, I see Michael Thomas here on the call. He was at Woodmont at the time and also Blue Mash. Um, so, you know, it's kind of cool looking back on that memory. And I have still have a picture of our first team. The majority of my team from that year is now off in college. And I think even, you know, one is about to graduate. A couple of them are getting ready to go off to college. So I'm um, happy to talk about PGA Junior League today and kind of where it's helped me grow at Springfield and uh, where it's helped the club financially. So looking forward to the, uh, the discussion today. Great, thanks, Josh. And for those of you who don't know me, um, a PGA member now for almost 30 years uh, and uh, held various positions around the country from you know, assistant to general manager to even uh, director of the PGM program at the University of Colorado. And uh, three years ago um, was, uh, asked to join the coaching and player development team at the PGA of America and serve as a regional league manager. But I also, uh, it's not just PGA Junior League that I'm here to help with. I help with all the player development programs and serve as a consultant to you and help you uh, with what you need to do and what's best for your uh, facility. So uh, it's great to be here, be a part of it. Uh, Josh and I have a, a, a really good connection. Uh, while I was working at Penn State University golf courses, Josh was uh, a student in the Penn State uh, PGM program and uh, actually worked for us at the Penn State uh, University golf courses on our team and um, just been uh, very excited to see his success and what he's been able to do. So it's uh, always a joy to spend time with him as well as with all of you. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick and um, show you a few things uh, for um, the coming year. Can I just get a thumbs up from somebody? You're good there. I can see it. Great. Thank you. So, you know, always uh, when we look at PGA Junior League, we're always talking about how we can transform lives through experiences that transcend golf. And that's in PGA Junior League. And that's what we um, strive to do. And that is to uh, be able to provide a fun experience for the kids to uh, learn the game of golf and enjoy it in a team environment and uh, enjoy a little bit of competition. And um, it's been great to see that over each year, uh, you know, anywhere from 81 to 82 percent of our players in PGA Junior League are a beginner or intermediate golfers. And uh, that's the overall goal is to help them develop and uh, enjoy the game more. A little review from 2021, and you can read all these. And, um, you know, we uh, had a great year in 2020, to, you know, despite the pandemic, we had over 30,000 players in the program across the country. And the Middle Atlantic section was uh, the second, uh, had the second highest number of uh, participants in the country. 
Uh, so uh, Middle Atlantic section did a great job in the past year with uh, PGA Junior League. And the one thing I just want to um, point out here on this slide is this was a survey we did uh, of PGA League Junior, junior League families uh, back in July of last year after we got the season going. Um, and the one thing that I think was uh, really surprising and really good, I felt, was that 91% of our families uh, felt that they were comfortable returning to golf, returning to PGA Junior League, to all the activities um, uh, at uh, your facility. So I think that's something really good to look at as we go into 2021 and uh, everybody feeling comfortable with uh, going forward with uh, the programs uh, that we have. So for 2021, uh, some things to really uh, focus on are at the local league level and flexibility and adaptability are the two words we're really looking at for 2021 when it comes to your local leagues. And so we put some things into place to make it easier for you in 2021 to run your local leagues. You know, first of all, the minimum number of players uh, for 13U and, and 17U to be able to join, uh, be able to form an official league if you're planning on participating in postseason. Um, so, you know, for 13 years, 24 players, 17 years, it's eight players. Uh, as we go into 2022, we're going to increase that to 16. Um, and as I mentioned here in a minute, uh, we're going to be adding some uh, postseason events for 17 U. The other thing comes with your matches per game and flags. So in your matches per game in your league, you're welcome to adjust up and down the number of matches just based upon number of players. So let's you know just say in that 13 U, if there's only 24 players in your league, you can you can have six player teams versus eight, uh, like we've done in the past. So a lot of flexibility at the local league level uh, this year. And then even for your younger players, if you want to shorten your flags uh, for them, where they play two holes for a flag, just for example, um, that's up to you. And that's a lot of flexibility. And we can talk about that more when we do our league uh, calls. Uh, to let all of you decide how you want to handle things within your league. Uh, but uh, just the main word is flexibility, adaptability at the local league level, just to make things easier for you and what's best for you, your facility, and your players. Some things to talk about in postseason. Um, so in 2021, uh, for 17U, we're going to have another section championship, and then we're offering a regional championship this year for 17U. Uh, ultimate goal here is within a couple of years to hopefully have a national championship for 17U. Um, so uh, just be watching for information on that. Two, two things really important that uh, I want to stress um, for postseason. Uh, in 13U, they have to be at least 10 years of old and not older than 13 as of July 31st. Uh, in 17U, it's 14 to 17 uh, as of July uh, 31st. Now, uh, a lot of people question why. Well, this falls in line with our learnings in the American Development Model, uh, PGA.coach, and the fact that those that are ages 10 to 13 are in better capability, we found, in competing in the postseason versus those that might be eight or nine years old. Um, you know, there, I know there's exceptions, but uh, we're following, decided to follow what uh, we've seen and what we've found in the American Development Model. The other thing is in 13U, instead of 10 players per team like we've had in the past, past there'll be eight players per all-star team. And the reason we've done that is so that all eight players can play the entire time um, and not worry about substitutes and substitutes not being able to play at certain times. So and when, once we get the postseason, it'll be eight players per team. 17U is six players per team. And then we're introducing entry fees for regionals and national championship. And we're doing that because we're gonna enhance both of those events and add some more things for the players. Um, and uh, so there'll be fees that uh, they'll have to pay to uh, participate in the national championship. We've already um, heard from captains different ideas on fundraising and we've got some ideas for fundraising if you need to do that. And uh, when we get to that point, you can just reach out and I'm, I'll be happy, more than happy to help. Uh, team kit for 2021. Uh, we're on a two-year cycle with our uh, uniforms. Um, so we've got the orange and blue again with the uh, cool camo print. One thing we did change is we heard a lot of feedback of kids wanting uh, visors. And so 
Uh, this year they'll have, when they register uh, their kids, the parents will be able to choose hat or visor uh, for the kids. A lot of the girls have asked for the visors. Um, and so uh, we wanted to offer that this year in the team kit. To help you get started this year before you register, if you wanna use this, we have a preseason worksheet that you can fill out. And this is uh, when you click on the captain and coaches uh, tab on the website, it'll take you to the page where you can click on and use this. One of the things that this form does is it helps you formulate your pricing if you want some help with that. You put in everything you're offering with your PGA Junior League and then just based upon things that we've learned, um, you'll get a suggested price for your PGA Junior League, as well as you can put in all your other details for your PGA Junior League. And once you complete it, you'll get an email with all those details. And then you can use that email to help you with your official captain registration. So this is just a preseason worksheet that's available for you if you'd like to use it uh, to help you with things. So how do you get started with PGA Junior League? Very simple, go to the captain and coaches tab, click on there. Um, if you wanna complete the pre-registration planning tool, you click there and then register as a captain um, is also there. And then there's also documents in there if you wanna learn about more about the enhancements in 2021. And then once again, you can see up in the uh, line there, we still have COVID-19 resources available for you uh, to help you with uh, everything in your PGA Junior League. Um, and, you know, just one thing I just want to stress is, or two things. One, remember 91% of the parents are comfortable. Uh, number two, uh, want to make sure everybody understands February 1st is when player registration will be opening. Uh, this past Tuesday, uh, an email was sent to parents from 2019 and 2020. Uh, letting them know that it'll be open on February 1st. So uh, now's a good time to get your captain registration finished if you haven't had the chance yet. Uh, if you got any questions about that, we'll I'll do so when we get there. Uh, it's really a pleasure to introduce you now to PGA Family Cup. Uh, we've been piloting the program for the last couple of years. Uh, first year was in six, year, six states, uh, last year was in 12 states. And in 2021, we're continuing the pilot, but we're going to all 50 states uh, to be able to offer this uh, to you. And, you know, I just want to start by sharing my golfing family. <laughs> you know, my dad introduced me to the game. My, my uh, grandpa was a big part of it, too. Um, but I've been very blessed uh, in that everybody in my family, my two boys and my wife, enjoy time on the course. And um, we've really... Uh, treasured it as wonderful family time away from the TV, away from the video games, away from the computer, and just time all four of us together. And, and even just when I go out with my boys and play, it's it's been a lot of fun. So it, it, the family time has been uh, really great. And I'm sure all of you um, have a, at some point uh, been able to uh, uh, do the same thing. But uh, both my boys, they're in college now. Uh, my oldest is 21. Uh, and my youngest is a uh, freshman University of Auburn. And uh, what's cool is uh, once he gets his feet all grounded there in college his first year, he's hoping to join the next gen club golf team uh, there at University of Auburn and continue to play. Uh, and so just, to, you know, it's been exciting to see that. And, and our influence in the game has actually influenced others. Um, and I think that's what's so great about the family aspect of it. Um, far right there is uh, Elizabeth, who is my youngest girlfriend. They've been together now about a year. Um, and of course, Jack there. And in the striped shirt is Robert, who is Elizabeth's dad. Um, and about seven months ago, uh, Robert came to me and said, Doug, I'd really like to learn how to play golf. Will you teach me? And I said, I'd love to. And I, I said, why would you like to learn? He goes, I want to do something to, I want to find something that I can spend time doing with Jack. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that really meant a lot to me that uh, he was wanting to do this to learn the game uh, and spend time with Jack. And so, and Robert's now playing once a week, you know, and so the family aspect of things definitely has an influence. Um, and so, you know, why Family Cup? One of the reasons, big time, uh, was, as you can see in the pictures, as we have Junior League, and you've all seen it as Junior League captains, um, 
during the time that the kids are playing, you've got everybody on the cart path watching. Uh, mom, dad, uncle, grandpa, kids, siblings, and all of that. And so, you know, a few years back, we were talking about this as a team. And we're like, okay, how do we get people off the cart path watching and onto the course playing? And the more we thought about it, when we look at sports, um, you're on a team and your team is your family. Well, we want Family Cup to be a, a thing where your family is your team and doing this in a way that it's fun at your facilities for them. And then also look at possibly down the road, offering things for those that might wanna be more competitive. So um, it's just uh, been a way that we found, we want to see to get families together. My first event that I um, had in my sections as a pilot was in Downing, uh, Downing Golf Club in Erie, Pennsylvania, part of the Western New York um, section of the PGA. Uh, Karen's the golf professional there. Karen had um, 12 teams, 12 foursomes uh, playing in it and um, everybody had a great time. The one thing that I loved uh, that I saw as I was riding around is you saw different makeups of teams, uh, which is what we want to see in Family Cup. And, you, know, you had one team where you had uh, dad, grandpa, uncle, and junior golfer kid playing. Uh, dad, mom, two kids, dad, three kids. Um, you know, even had one family that the wife and a younger sibling, she was like three, just came out right around and enjoyed the time with them. So uh, it was really a successful event and everybody had a lot of fun, was asking, okay, when do, when do we have the next one? So, you know, really it's a fun scramble format. Um, since we're still in the pilot phase, we're providing a lot of flexibility, adaptability, once again with this, for you to uh, run the event that the, the way that you would like. Um, you know, we loosely define family. We tell them, okay, play with those you love, play with those you want to spend time with. Uh, we really recommend a, a par three setup uh, with one set of tees, nine holes, uh, so that everybody's playing from the same tee and those that maybe can't play well enough as some others in the family um, have a chance to um, uh, contribute to what they're doing. There is a $45 fee uh, per family uh, uh, that, that we charge for you to have PGA Family Cup. And what's included in that is number one, a, a team kit uh, that the family gets, a nice uh, photo frame, a silver photo frame, uh, a uh, Bluetooth speaker, a couple of poker chip ball markers, and then a bag that uh, it can all be put in and you can give to them uh, with that. And then the other things that are included are you know, me here to help you. There's an amazing resource center on a brand new website that does not use Sports Engine. Uh, it's a new platform that we've put together for you uh, and a really much easier website to use. Uh, we also provide awards for you for the event. You'll be sent each time you do an event. So if you do multiple events in a season, each time, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll send you event, uh, the awards made by Signs by the Sea really nice uh, for, for you to do. And we've got a promo kit as well. And the registration is easy in that one, you register, register your facility once, and then once you've got your events all signed, lined up, you go back in and register each event, um, just putting information about the event. You don't have to re-enter any information about your facility. Um, so we've made it easier on that front for you. We want you to think outside the box with this, get creative with it, find ways to make it more fun for the families. Uh, we've seen uh, Halloween events where everybody dressed up in costume. We've seen cart decorating contests um, and different ways for everybody to have fun uh, during the event. Um, so the last thing I wanna do is just share a quick video. It's from the first tee of Miami uh, and uh, telling a little bit about their family cup there. At, Excuse me. The PGA Family Cup is a program that the first tee offers, allowing families to come together to play golf and have a blast. Sometimes the best are longest in golf, and there will be many great memories created that will last forever. Here are some of our families who joined us to play some golf. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Manny Vidal, and these are my boys. And uh, They've been playing golf for some time, and as a non-golfer, it was very hard for me to appreciate how hard and what it is that they do. And through the Family Cup, I've been able to learn and appreciate what it is that they do and how hard it is. Do you want to tell me what you like about it? I like that you can play with your friends on the Family Cup and spend time together. I like it because you could spend time with your family. So I guess it's a, a lot of family time and laughing at dad. And uh, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the next one and just continue. Hi, good morning, all. My name is Ray. My name is Maddie. And I gotta say, I have to report that it's been a great privilege and an honor uh, and a great experience to be able to spend time with my son in the Family Cup because we've been able to play together. And not only I have learned a lot, but so has he. The Family Cup has taught me and my dad to persevere. I've learned good sportman sportmanship. It has raised my confidence a lot. And... It's made me respect me golf and all the other players. So thank you for friendly coming. Hi, I'm David and this is Francesca. Hi. So Francesca's been playing golf now for about two and a half years and she's turned into an amazing golfer. And it's because of events like the PJ Family Cup where we actually get to spend time together and she actually gets to learn from golf and we get to compete together, which I think is very important. Yes. I love the PGA Family Cup because it tells me what I need to learn about golf. It makes me like better. Um, there's challenges and I get to spend time with my favorite caddy. Yeah, that's right. So we look forward to competing in more. Uh, and thank you. Take care. So that's information uh, that I have for you on PGA Junior League and PGA Family Cup. Thanks for uh, letting me um, share everything, updates, and then uh, introduce PGA Family Cup to you. Uh, I know I went pretty quick uh, because I really want to spend time with Josh here. Um, so if you have more questions about anything, more than happy to give me, contact me, look at the websites, Junior League or PGA Junior League or PGA Family Cup uh, for help there. So, sorry. So what I'd like to do now, um, Josh, if you wouldn't mind sharing a few words, uh, a little more, a few words about your programs, things that you've done with Junior League. I know that you even did your own little type of family cup uh, event last year. And so I'd like to hear more from you on that. Sure, Doug. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we got a few questions as well, and hopefully we'll get some questions from the audience, but thank you everybody for coming on here today. Um, just want to share a couple of different ideas. And I think now, as you can see, even with PG generally changing their minimum numbers, um, you know, it really makes it to where you can, you know, have a little bit more fun with it and be creative in terms of what you do at your own facility, especially if you can get a, an internal league. So, you know, one of the things some of you may know about, you know, what we've tried to do here at Springfield is um, we've kind of tried to brand our, our team, our mascot. Um, the Springfield Sharks have been what we've been using since the inception. Uh, so all of our team names are all kind of have some kind of shark reference. Uh, you know, this past year in 2020, we had three different teams in the 13U and one 17U team. We've kind of been through an evolution. We came obviously from 2012 with one team all the way to that. And in 2019, in the fall, we had our own internal fall league and I'm projecting for this coming year for 2021 to be able to return back and, and have our own internal league again for 13U with at least four teams. Um, you know, I think anything you can do like that, you know, early on, we actually sold some some PGA Junior League, you know, merchandise with our shark logo on it. So parents and siblings and grandparents, you know, it was another auxiliary. It was it a huge revenue generator in the shop? Maybe not, but it was another five, ten thousand dollars in sales. Um, and so that was a cool way. We just partnered with Nike and, and they this was back uh, early on before they really started doing the, the PGA Junior League merchandise that you could get from the online stores. 
Um, obviously, 2020 was a, a different year for everybody, right? So a um, couple of things we did early on, you know, we obviously kind of took a slower start. We were planning for a normal year and then when COVID hit, um, but towards the end of April, early May, we started to get, we were doing some distance lessons with, with uh, individual students. And we decided to put out there to our whole junior league database, everybody who had registered for the year, that we were willing to do small group practices. So what we asked them to do is if they were interested to send us an email, we would try to group them up. If there were siblings that were all playing, we'd put them in the same group, but we did groups of four juniors with one professional. That way we're able to easily socially distance. We're still able to provide the practice session for them. And a lot of times, you know, I have three assistants on the staff. Ian and I may be working with with each of our own groups at the same time. And we may switch in the middle in terms of stations, whether it's driving range or putting green. And then we'd usually have another set of uh, small groups right afterwards. So we could, you know, really kind of capitalize on setting up once and breaking down once and be able to get more kids, more juniors through there. So that helped us at least get the 2020 season started until we got into the June timeframe. We got the, the thumbs up to kind of start going forward with matches and whatnot. Um, you know, we'll talk about a lot of different things. One of the things we did this year that was new for us was we actually entertained, we got a request from a member who had a friend that was not a member at the club, wanted to do junior league with us. And so I went to our GM, I went to our, our membership director and said, what, what do you feel comfortable with? I know we don't normally do this. What we came up with was our normal junior league fee for the season is $295. And this family paid a premium price. They paid an extra almost double. It was, it was, I think it ended up being about $500 to join for our season. And it was from the beginning, it was let them know that we're going to let them do this one time. It was kind of a trial year for them, one season with junior league. Um, and then after that season, if they want to continue doing it, they're going to have to look at joining. So at this point in the year, you know, we, that, that junior was, uh, was with us from May through October. Um, and I've, I've got an email out to the parents, you know, obviously wintertime is a tough time to join a club when there's not as much golf going on, but I'm hoping as we move closer that I'll hear, uh, as we get towards the junior league season kicking off that maybe they want to look at joining. So sometimes even at private clubs, I know junior league has got a lot of great ways to try to, um, you know, have the Dick sporting goods sponsorships and things like that, but maybe even be a little more flexible at a, at a private club. And if, if that turns into a membership, man, that's going to make our junior league program even that much more valuable. And, and we've had some success with that in years past. Um, one of the things Doug mentioned, I know they're starting to do now and really roll out is, is having multiple sets of tees. We did that in the fall of 2019. We actually had three sets of tees for our fall league. We took some of our really advanced players, let's say your quote unquote, you know, all-stars that would be capable at that level. They're playing individual tournament golf and they were playing almost the green tee yardage at Springfield. A couple of holes, we moved them up. Our normal junior league tees, which was the, the core of our group, you know, par fours are somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 yards. Um, and then par threes here at Springfield on the front nine for us are, are fairly short. They're like 45 to 60 yards for the regular tees. And we had one set that was even closer than that. So we had some five, six, seven-year-olds that were getting involved, getting interested. And that way we were able to tee them up at a more appropriate yardage even if they didn't really get it off the ground, if they rolled at 30, 40 yards, their drive may be the best one just because of where their advantage was off the tee. So that helped them feel like they're helping out. So I, I'd encourage you to do some of that. A um, couple other ideas that we've done, you know, we didn't get to do it in 2020 because we weren't really gathering indoors, but at the end of the 2019 season, we, hold, we held a uh, season ending banquet and we gave out, uh, we recognized our 13 new juniors that had been with us that were kind of, graduating from that and moving on to 17U. Um, and we also gave out some awards that night. We used the, the certificates that PGA Junior League provides um, and, and gave out some superlative awards, you know, you know, MVP, coaches award with the Sharks. We kind of had some fun. Everybody that was on that, that travel team kind of got an award or recognition. We had one that was the Just Keep Swimming Award. It was for our youngest, um, our youngest shark there on the team. So you can have some fun with that. And it really just brings that season to a nice culmination, kind of wraps it up. That was in late November, early December. Um, and I would just encourage you, especially this time of year, if you have, if you're a private club or even if you have some demographic information on your public students, 
you know, the power of an invitation from a PGA or LPGA professional is really powerful. So one of the things I did in the last month or so, and I shared this with Doug when we were prepping for today is I took a look at all of our juniors, you know, 17 and under, and I, and I tried to break them up by where their ages would be on July 31st. And from the juniors that have either played in PGA Junior League or have done any of our junior golf uh, programs before, a camp or whatnot, I found we have, I think, 55 strong targets in our 13U for this coming year and 11 other possibilities. And then in 17U, I've got 17 targets and nine possibilities. So that makes me feel pretty confident. I share those numbers with our junior golf chair. You know, I'm emailing those people as, as registration rolls out on February 1st and saying, here it is, sign up now. And really, you know, for the targets, I may reach out to them personally in, a, in an email or phone call and even ask for them to put their son or daughter on the phone and, and just say, hey, you know, it's Coach Josh with Springfield. Would love for you to think about coming out and playing on the Sharks this year. And you'd be amazed how far something like that can take it. And, and the family's really wild. And maybe a junior that really never expressed an interest, mom or dad had to kind of drag them to the range or to a junior clinic. They got that invite from a golf pro and, and now they're like, wow, maybe they saw something in me or maybe I should try this out. No, that's great, Josh. Uh, you know, I'll just share with all of you, you know, Josh has a Sharks. We have uh, a number of teams named across the country. There's a team in Texas called the Pythons. And, um, you know, that, that adds a lot of fun to it for the kids and uh, just adds an extra level of enjoyment for them. So Josh, you were talking about the in-house uh, leagues. Um, can you tell me what you think the advantages are of that for you? Um, I think there's a, you know, a lot of times you can get the scheduling done earlier, right? You're not waiting for other golf clubs or golf pros to kind of everybody's um, process is different. So whereas at Springfield, maybe I, I can get the schedule done by mid-February so I can get it out to my parents. If I'm waiting on away matches at another club, that's just holding up that whole process. So um, there's some advantages there. There's the advantage of the, you know, the, the members who don't really get what junior league is and they go, what's going on? And you say, these are all our Springfield juniors out here participating in this. And obviously the orange and blue jerseys uh, can be pretty visible. So, um, you know, I think that's a, a cool factor there. And like I said, you, you have a little bit more ownership and a little more flexibility in terms of how you manage it. You know, I like the model where you can balance your teams so that they're competitive. Um, so in that internal league, you can kind of do that. And your, your all-stars or your better players are going to be able to be in a position to maybe help some of the younger boys and girls to kind of help pull them up and, and give them that experience. And then when you come out of that season, your, your all-stars are going to be your all-stars. They're probably still going to earn that spot um, for the team, but you know, it's, there's, you've got a little bit more control over it. Um, you know, internal communications are easier. You know, this year we went to a lot more tee times versus shotguns. We used to do some big dual matches. Some of you on the call that I see Jimmy Kowalski was on there. You know, we've done some things with army Navy or, uh, international country club of Fairfax. The, the shotgun is kind of cool and it can get everybody together and it may, may lead to a little bit more F and B if everybody sticks around with other families. But especially in 2020, we weren't doing a lot of shotguns. So the tea time events, you have a little bit more control over that. And you can kind of manage that within your, your weekly schedule, especially if you can just, you know, I'm not waiting or I don't have to tell Linda Gotti at Fairfax that the match is going to start at 4 o'clock. If, if my tea sheet predicates that it needs to start at 4.30, I just slide it back to 4.30 and my parents kind of get that because they're also, you know, looking to play and their friends are out there playing over the weekend. So I think there's a lot of benefits to that, Doug. Okay, great. Thanks, Josh. And by the way, I just want to remind everybody, if you've got a question, go ahead and throw it in the chat and I'll, I'll throw it to Josh if you've got something there. Josh, I want to ask a little bit about, um, you know, the community aspect of this for you at your club. You know, what, what do the parents and kids, um, you know, really enjoy about Junior League the most If on your mind? What do you think the most is uh, that they enjoy about it? Sure. Um, so we actually, we did something fun at the end of the 2019 season. It was such a, that fall season was so cool having that internal league um, that towards the end of one of the last practices of the year, we had made up, Liz Cooper and I had made up some sheets. Um, and it basically, it was like a little 
bio it's, uh, that we put on the bulletin board when you walk out of the locker room area and you're going out towards the golf area, you had to walk right by it. So the sheets were orange and blue and white. And I've got a few of them to share with you today, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. I don't know how well these will show up, but um, I'll just read a couple of them to you. I pulled out a couple of today. I still have these in my office. Uh, Grace Saunders at the time, she was 13. She's now aged up into 17U, but she said, we asked, you know, what's your favorite thing about PGA Junior League? And she said, competing with friends. Uh, and then we listed which team she was on and we asked them to put their goal for next season. And her goal was to do better at putting. Um, then we had the opposite end of the spectrum. We had a seven-year-old here, Cadence Chen. Um, her favorite thing was the match. She's a, you know, she's a competitor. She's a grinder. That season, she was playing the most forward tees. And her goal for the next year was to play from the yellow tees, which is where kind of our middle set of tees where most of the, a lot of the older kids were playing from. And then lastly, uh, Riley Witt. He was nine years old. Um, he's been doing junior league for a few years. Um, his favorite thing was the games during practice. So we try to really engage the kid with different games uh, during the practice sessions. And again, his uh, goal for the next season was to get better at putting. So um, obviously with junior league, they start to learn, you know, that putting really, really counts. And you see a lot of kids that come to junior clinics, they just want to hit driver and hit it far. But, you know, they really see that the matches can be won and lost right around the greens. And so I think, as you get the kids more involved and they start to play in more matches and even our practices, we'll take them on the course and do some rehearsals and get different players playing together. Um, I think those things are the memorable factors for them. So I kind of like that, that, you know, even practice got to mention, we made those fun enough that that was his favorite thing. And then from the family perspective, it's really a family affair here at Springfield. It is not uncommon to see, and we don't charge for spectator carts. Um, we probably could and my GM would be very happy, but, um, you know, parents, grandparents, I mean, we have some matches with, you know, eight carts following along for these matches. I mean, it's, a, it's truly a caravan. It's a spectacle. So it becomes, you know, and then the likelihood is that that family, uh, an extended family is going to stick around at the club afterwards and they're going to be up on the patio having dinner. Um, so, you know, I think the parents really like the team aspect because, you know, before we used to, and I've heard this before, I said this on other panels, um, we would see, you know, somebody sign up for a junior clinic or junior class that we had, and they wouldn't come back week after week because it conflicted with soccer practice or whatnot. And they felt like they were leaving, you know, their soccer uh, teammates down if they, if they missed a practice or a game. Well, now they're, they're on a team, right? They've got teammates that they're trying to be held accountable to. And so they're, they're coming to practice, they're coming to matches. I've, I've had many kids where they're deciding to stop playing baseball or stop doing other sports because they really want to focus on golf and do PJ junior league as they kind of go through junior high and approach high school. Yeah, that, that's great. It's, it's amazing to see the family impact that uh, this provides at, at all facilities. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the membership aspect of things with, for you, Josh, you know, in the past, you've shared some things with me about how you've seen some growth in membership uh, from PGA Junior League. And can you share a little bit of that uh, with everybody? Sure. And some of you have probably already seen this, um, or at least heard about the one big, big year we had. It, it probably five, six years ago, uh, Mike Aldridge and I sat down and really looked at the impact of PGA Junior League at Springfield. And it was, uh, it was right around the time that uh, right after the time that we, I was able to, I was fortunate enough to coach a team to the national championship back in 2013. Um, we actually converted some memberships. In addition to all the other stuff that we talk about here, we talk about food and beverage revenue, uh, merchandise sales. Um, that year, we actually converted uh, a couple of trial members to, uh, to full members. Their whole family joined. And we actually had a family um, that had been taking lessons with Erica Larkin before she, she moved facilities. And they, they sought out a, a club with an active PGA Junior League for their son. Um, and they joined because of our PJ Junior League program. The, the family called me ahead of time, asked questions about it. Um, and so that year alone, in addition to the, I think we only did, it was probably, we, we, the total impact was, was 102,000 to the facility. I think only like five or 6,000 of that was actual PJ Junior League entry fees. You know, the other stuff on top of it, obviously three memberships can go quite a long way in getting to that number. Um, and you know, I haven't had that success year over year, but I will say that 
indirectly, the families that have come and joined the club, you know, we've had a lot of success with getting their neighbors, their, their other families to join. And it may not be a direct impact in terms of they join because of our PGA Junior League program, but when they come out and they see the club and they see it's welcoming for juniors and they see, you know, hear about, you know, the other family and the, and the matches that they're playing and see some of the social media presence. I'm friends with, you know, a lot of the parents on Facebook and, and other, and they'll tag me in a post when they post a picture of, you know, their son or daughter in their junior league uniform at a match. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely impact of the membership. Um, one of the cool things and one of the, my favorite memories about junior league was uh, in 2019, the spring season, we, we were undefeated going into our last match and it was at international and they, they were a good team. Uh, Robin Beach was the, uh, the captain over there. And uh, I told the team, if we win this match and go undefeated, I'm gonna let you dump water on me. And the kids were all excited about it. So um, sure enough, they pulled through, I think we won nine to three that day in the match. And we gathered after the match right next to the putting green there at international. And they had one of those foot joy coolers, the ones with the, uh, the, the socks come in. Uh, and some kids just wanted to get on the action. They had cups, two cups in their hand and just dumped them all on me on the, at the same time. We took a picture afterwards. So I knew it was coming or I knew the possibility was there. So I already had a couple of beach towels in the car for the ride home. But, uh, you know, that was a fun memory. And it just, I think it, you know, just showed the kids that, that we were all in and I was all in on, on them and their success. So, um, you know, I think anything you can do for that. And I know we're going to talk a little bit, Doug, you know, you guys have that PGA Junior League valuation form you know, trying to track that and, and quantify the impact at your facility is huge. You know, for me, I'm going to share that with my GM when I go into my review here, our fiscal year runs through March. So I haven't had that meeting yet, but even it's not as much about me and my personal, you know, income where I want to try to really use that is showing the impact of our program and then try to tell the story of, you know, if I can get an extra intern or if I can get an extra assistant to help out with our junior league and our other player development programs, imagine how much more we can do as we grow and imagine how much more impact. So if I can, if I can kind of sell that and show that it almost pays for itself or it will pay for itself, I think that's where you can really, you know, continue to grow and try to drive that impact of the program. Yeah, that's really great. I'm glad you brought that up um, because I wanted to share that with everybody on here today. If you've been a captain, you know, last year and in the past, um, in the Captain Resource Center uh, in PGAJuniorLeague.com, there is a program valuation form that uh, Josh has been is one in the in the section. There's been several other in the section that have used it, uh, and um, you complete that form, and then it it gives you a printout of uh, all the things that uh, PGA Junior League has brought to your facility and what the value is of that program. Plus, it continues to help you show your value to the facility, um, and to your members, your board, and your management. And so, um, Josh, when you completed it, what, did it take you long? It did not take me long, no. It was, it was very easy. Um, you know, a couple of things I had to look up. You know, you can do some things, and I remember this, the old one where I kind of sat down with Mike, you know, it was just more asking questions and trying to use some case studies of members to try to quantify where you got there. But it didn't take me long on that aspect. Um, and Doug, you asked me earlier, I don't think I answered it. You asked about Family Cup. Um, when I heard about PJ Family Cup, I was so excited. And then I was disappointed last year when, when Doug and his team told me that it still wasn't being piloted here in the Middle Atlantic. So I kind of, asked some pointed questions of Doug and Claire and said, you know, what can I do? What can I do? So I ran a family cup program without the PGA family cup name on it at Springfield in 2020. It was actually one of the first events we ran because with social distancing and, and single rider carts, we ran this in mid May. Um, and it was great because it was all family members, right? So they could, you know, moms and, and daughters and fathers and sons and grandparents, they were comfortable riding together at that time. Um, so we ran it, I think we had 11 families take part, a uh, nine hole event. Um, so really excited. I thought it was really cool. And, and it was so, so well done that I told Doug, I've already scheduled out for 2021. We're doing three events in 2021. We're gonna do a spring, a summer and a fall. And where I think for, for our facility where that can really help out is 
you know, a lot of times we may pick up some new members in April, May, and June. So family that comes in in May or June, if you only have one event, you know, all of a sudden they're looking at having to wait a full calendar year for that. So hopefully I'll be able to have some families that do all three. And then it's a great opportunity if I get a family that joins in May and I've got one coming up in July, I can make sure they're aware of it and that can help integrate them into the club. You have to meet some of the other families. So I think that's the beauty too of having a spring season and a fall. Somebody may miss out on registration for spring and they join in June, but if you've got another junior league program starting in the fall, make sure they're aware of it, get them involved and get them enrolled in, in August for your, your fall program. That's really great. Yeah, glad to hear uh, that's, uh, thanks for you know just kind of piloting it yourself and uh, getting a feel for it. Um, I've got a couple of questions now. Uh, I think maybe the first one I can answer. Uh, when does a season officially start? Season runs from March 1st to July 31st. That's the regular season. And then postseason will begin in August. Um, and you can run your local league, your local program anytime between that March 1st and uh, July 31st uh, time. Um, and then the other question is, do we set up matches or is there like a division made? Um, just to kind of help you with that, once we have everybody's captain registrations, um, and so, you know, that's why the sooner the better, uh, Claire and I get together and uh, put together the leagues uh, for each of everybody. Um, if you're not doing an in-house league, we help you set up your, your league and then we set up a league uh, call where uh, all of you can meet together with us to help you and get your uh, schedules and everything set for your division. So uh, that will answer, I think, that question. Josh, do you have anything else to add to that that I mentioned? Okay. Um, and then Josh, here, here's a good one. How many practices do you suggest and the duration of those practices? That's the first question. So if you want to answer that. Okay. Um, in our typical seasons, we do, you know, about six practices per season. Now our matches generally in the spring run from early May to mid June or so. So our practice will start at the end of March, early April. So the month of April basically is a practice every week. And then we'll continue some practices into May and June, but we may spread them out because we're seeing the kids at matches on an almost weekly basis. I've been doing 90 minute practices and that allows us to get, you know, sometimes we'll do all range, all short game, but a lot of times we may go on the course with them for the whole 90 minutes, or we may do half and half. So having that 90 minute time frame, you know, gives us a lot more opportunity. And, and I ask the parents to help out, you know, especially if we're going on the course, you know, we can't be everywhere. And if we're trying to get more kids playing out there, you know, I've got, um, I'll register some, a couple of my parents as coaches and have them go through the background screening. Um, you know, my junior golf chair has been doing that for a couple of years now. His daughter, Grace, who I mentioned earlier, is now in 17U, but he's got a son, Ashton, who's 10. And, uh, you know, he's been playing for years. And so he's very well versed in our program and how we run it. So if you can get a couple of parents that are, you know, eager to help out, it can just, you know, help help you get those juniors on and off the golf course in a responsible manner. Yeah, that's a great point you make about the coaches, Josh, because, you know, I always get the question or I always get the comments, you know, my time is limited. Uh, you know, we do offer this where you can have uh, parents that can be very helpful that you know will help uh, register as a coach underneath you as a captain. They go through all the training uh, for uh, and background checks so that, uh, we know that they're safe. And then they're there, they can help you with the matches. Uh, they can help you with organization. I, I think with that, you can think very much uh, about um, a little league baseball model where you know you have all these volunteer coaches. Uh, we uh, want to make sure that's available for you to help you with your program. So um, it's a great point you bring up about coaches. And that really helps too. A lot of times you're going to get a rain out or a thunderstorm. And so all of a sudden a match maybe gets rescheduled somewhere else on a date where you have something going on at your facility. And so you're like, well, we can do that match, but I, I can't send any of my staff. Um, you know, so having a parent like that, that knows how to do it and you can just share with the other pro, Hey, we're not going to be able to make it, or I'm not going to be able to be there until the end of the match. But so-and-so is going to be there to get the kids organized and started. And I'll have them reach out to you when they get at the facility. It just, you know, it really helps out. 
getting the program going. Yeah, definitely. Um, next question I've, I've got here on uh, from someone is uh, uh, how do you, how many matches do you suggest for an internal league? It would really depend on your numbers. Um, you know, in 2020, we, we had three teams and we were in a league with Country Club of Fairfax and they had two. So there was five total teams in that league. The way, I mean, we could have gotten away with maybe just doing one match against everybody else, but because it was a longer season, we actually did two. So, if, you know, our one team was the the Tiger Sharks. They, pay, they played eight matches. Uh, they played the other four teams each twice. So they played them once home and once away. I think if you're in a league bigger than five, you know, a six team league or a seven team league, I don't know how much Claire and Doug are doing those anymore. You know, I think one match against each team, you know, five to six matches. I think, I think that's the kind of the right number of, of matches. It gives you a sense of a season. Um, so and you can do some things too, like in an internal league, maybe you, maybe you have, uh, everybody play each other once and then you set up a bracket maybe you play it out so you make the you know the first place team play the fourth place team and the second play the third and so they get a couple of extra matches that way maybe they don't play everybody twice but whatever makes sense for you and your schedule and your season um i would build in some time especially given you know as, as weather starts to get warmer I would build in a little bit of buffer time at the end of your schedule because you're going to have to reschedule a match or two. It's just, you know, if you get through a season unscathed, it's, I would go play Mega Millions or Powerball more. Okay, yeah, great. And, and one thing I want to share about, you know, uh, all the leagues, uh, whether it's internal or multi-facility, um, it's really up to you as captains how you want to do that and, and how many league, how many matches you want to schedule. Um, and if you really need it, you can reach out to me. I just put my email on there. Um, you can reach out to me and um, I can provide them to you. We actually have a, a league scheduling matrix uh, that we can send you. You just type in the names of uh, the teams that are playing and then it maps out matches for you to help you with that automatically. So that, that can be there um, to help you. Doug, one other thing I want to say there, the only thing that I've ever heard is a quote unquote negative to the internal league is some of the families and some of the juniors will say we miss playing at other clubs and so we just said we, we can do both and so we have our internal league but we've set up some scrimmages with other clubs that we have relationships with so you know find a couple of clubs in your area and just say hey you know can we set up a scrimmage with you and, and maybe you do it with one team or two teams it doesn't have to officially count towards your season but it's just a way to get them out there. And so we did that this past year with international, they weren't in our division, but we set up two scrimmages and, you know, just made sure we had enough kids to, to manage it. So I think that's a way that you can do that. And you can even schedule those through the website. You can look up other teams. It's very easy. So I, I would encourage that. And Sean, I just wanted to check real quick on time. What, where are we going to? We're well, we're, we're here as long as, I mean, from my standpoint, I don't have a time limit, so uh, we're here to uh, – everybody kind of needs to leave. I mean, I see uh, we got a few more questions here that I think uh, you yeah. can answer. So if we keep getting questions, we'll stay on and do what we need to do. Okay, just want to double-check. Thank you. Um, so, Josh, here, this is um, um, from East Potomac, Langston, Rock Creek, um, you know, they're doing Family Cup at their three of their facilities. We're thinking of having separate teams at all three facilities. Uh, from your experience, how do you think uh, we best move forward with our programs? You know, and I think there really is how do we best start? How do we get things started? Um, might be a good question too there. So they got, th they have three different clubs. I, I would, um, one, one team at each club. Is that what I'm hearing kind of dog or? Uh, I think is that that's correct. Is that the right? That comes from James McArdle, I think. So it's either James Kim or James McArdle. Yeah. That uh, they have they're starting up a program, and they're they've got three facilities. So they're looking at whether or not uh, do they do they do one at each one? Do they do a combo or not? I would for unless they have somebody else local. I, I would. I would do one at each site and maybe make an internal league out of it. I mean, you can make requests to Doug and Claire and say, hey, we've got these three 
facilities. We'd like to run our own internal league. That way you can have a little bit more control over it. Um, you know, I, I would encourage them to do that. Fun fact, James McCardle actually grew up here at Springfield. His family's like, they're like royalty here. So um, mm -hmm. I see James out here a few times a year, but um, no, I, I would encourage them to do that. I think, you know, having, it's only going to spread their reach, right? Because they may have juniors that are closer to one facility versus another. Who knows? Maybe they get two teams at East Potomac and one at the other facilities and they can, you know, make a league out of it that way. So, um, no, I, I think, you know, to, to kickstart it, you know, I think having kind of a, maybe an orientation night, maybe in COVID time, you can't do that. Maybe you get the video from Doug and you send something out to the families that are interested um, to kind of just learn more about it. But if you have any hesitation about, should I start this or not? I would tell you to try it because it's going to, it's going to surprise you how successful it can be. Yeah. He put in here that they have 24 players, juniors at each course have a lot of interest. You know, so my thoughts there is if you've got that many at each course and that's the one course the parents want to take their kids to, you have a internal league at each course. Um, and then you'll have an all-star team from each course if you want uh, from that, if you want to do postseason, So um, that might be uh, the way to go there. And once again, you guys can give me a call and talk through it more um, with that. Let me see. What other question? Looks like, Doug, I think Claire kind of, um, Josh Sweeney had a question there about the captain link, and I think Claire's answered that that's on there. So I think you should be good there, Josh, if I'm correct. Um, and then yeah. Cedric's got some questions uh, on Family Cup as well as uh, practices and matches. Okay, so uh, I see here with Cedric, with the Family Cup, uh, we can regulate our own restrictions as far as age requirements for juniors or such, correct? Sure, that's up to you and what's best at your facility, uh, most definitely. And then uh, Josh, uh, for practices and matches, are there just one practice, one match a week? And I assume both can take place afternoon, evening. Yeah, and obviously that depends on your facility. You know, like I said before, we would, Typically in a spring season, uh, and even in the fall, we kind of use August as kind of our kickstart month there. We'll run one practice a week. What we had success with actually as our program grew in 2019, what we did was we set up three practice nights and we asked parents to, to select their preferred night so that everybody got to come to one practice per week. But it gave us some flexibility because we didn't know, like if I schedule the tiger sharks for practice on Thursdays. Well, what if half the kids on the tiger sharks have trouble making Thursdays? So we set up practices. I think it was on Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And they, they gave us their preferred date. So let's say out of the 30 kids, 14 said they could make Thursdays. And then it was like, you know, eight and eight for the other two we would base our number of professionals that we'd staff for those, for those practices based on that. So we'd have at least two professionals for the, for the 14 practice. And then on a week to week basis, somebody may reach out to us and say, Hey, we're normally here on Saturdays, but we're going away this weekend. Can we come to the Thursday practice? And as long as they gave me a heads up notice, so I, we could prepare for it, we'd do that. So that was another way that we could be flexible, still get the practices in. They're all in our PGA junior league program, right? So we're going to be practicing it. You know, they get to compete on matches, but we'd have some fun with it. If we happen to have four kids from the Tiger Sharks and four kids from the, you know, Greg Normans, we might pair them together or pair them against each other for a, a game or a competition at the end of practice. Um, but I think that's a way that you can be a little bit more flexible to the parents and let them, you know, when they sign up, they don't know which team their kid's going to be on. And they don't know what practice nights that. So you don't have to be that rigid. Yeah, so I'm going to throw this, Doug, I'm going to throw this to you is, is that so junior league to me is you, you've got a good temp, there's a template there. But when you're starting it up and stuff, you don't have to do it exactly A to Z like you've got. You allow everybody to kind of make make it work for them. I mean, I know for a while up here in Baltimore, we've done the, the age numbers is they can't be 14 by July 1st, but they may still be in eighth grade. 
a lot of the clubs in our area have eighth graders that are that turn 14 maybe a little bit before that you can still have a 14 year old in there it's just when you go to postseason you can't go they can't go onto the postseason roster and that's an example of of maybe a, a way of of changing the rules a little bit to help you and in, in your specific situation yeah you agree with that I totally agree with that, Sean. Um, you know, and I think you see that with the changes we've made this year that, you know, we want to provide that flexibility for you at that local league level. Even the things, uh, you know, we, uh, for those of you who may not know, we, we have conditions of play, which are the rules of play for PGA Junior League. Um, at the local league, local league level, they're there for you as guidelines to help. You as captains can discuss and say, oh, I'm not, we're not going to worry about this condition of play. We're not, you know, Whatever works best for you, your facility, those in your league, your kids, um, at the local league level, we have that flexibility. Um, it's just when we get to postseason, you know, those conditions of play, they become rules of play. And so it's like, you know, just a, a light switch flips and uh, we get, we follow things um, to the T. But down at the local level, yes, a lot of flexibility, most definitely. Yes. Great. And, and even, you know, if you have your own internal league, uh, a lot of flexibility there too for that, things like that as well. But, but even those that have multiple course leagues, uh, the captains can sit down in the captain's call and discuss how you're going to handle things to make it easier for everybody, more fun for the kids, um, and so on. So, yeah, that's a great question, Sean. Doug, you also have, you want to mention that you have the, the round tables that are, that are you and Claire are doing, I think, uh, this next uh, few weeks here, I think it is. Yes. You want to yeah. mention that? Yeah, we've already had a few uh, this week and then there's some scheduled next week. Um, and I, I think Claire, it's on, is it on the website or is it uh, on social media when we have them scheduled? It's on social media. Um, and I'll also put it in the comments, the rest of the schedule. We have them separated by area, but we say if you can't make it for your area one, please join another one. We have them as areas just in case you have questions for each other, but the information you'll get is the same. And if that time doesn't work for you, let us know, give us a call. We're happy to do individual calls too if your time doesn't fit with um, the schedule that we have. But I'll put that in the comments right now, but it is on social media too. And I had one question here about uh, prizes for the regular season or any prizes given. Unfortunately, you know, no, but, but you as captains can make some decisions on things you might want to do there. Uh, maybe you can order some medals, uh, things like that, that you can uh, provide for your, like your league champions. Um, that's, that's a possibility you can, can look at there. So, uh, Josh, I have, um, you know, one more quick question. I think, um, you know, if somebody's on the fence about hosting PGA Junior League, PGA Family Cup, you know, what, what would you tell them, you know, about that if they're on the fence for it and help them un understand and decide to join us? I mean, without knowing everybody's facilities, I would encourage them to give it a try. If you can get one parent who's excited about it or can help be your recruiter, your, your, you know, spokesperson for it and really help drive it, it's going to be successful. Um, you know, these parents, they, they want to see their kids enjoy golf. They want to see them coming out here and coming back to the facility. They don't want to be dragging them to the range. They want to be getting asked to bring them out to the range. So if you can encourage that, that family atmosphere, you know, we see it at private clubs. We see, you know, sometimes maybe the, the spouse is not engaged in golf. And if you can get them out there to play in a scramble format, even if it's not even an organized family cup, but maybe they're getting ready for family cup. So the family shows up on a Saturday evening to go out and play a few holes at 6 p.m. and they're doing that format. You know, now that person is at least having a golf experience. So I would definitely encourage them to, to give it a try. It's, you know, it's been huge for me. The other comment that I would just say, and I can share this with you, with anybody who needs it. Uh, you know, a few years back when Paul Jones is still at Mount Vernon, I kind of stole this from him because we showed up and he had a kind of a one page handout that had all their particular rules and reminders and T yardages on it. So I do that now and I, and I put the pairings on there. I'll have them on the cart steering wheels when they, when they show up. And one of the things we've done in the last year and a half that's really been popular, um, both with 
golf professionals and with parents is we've put a, a pace to play goal on it. So basically our goal is two hours and 15 minutes for nine holes. So if we're doing a shotgun start and maybe you're the A group and we're starting at four o'clock at 615, you're to finish the hole that you're on. You're not to start at any more holes. So it could be, and we've had it where maybe that last group of the day, maybe they're waiting on some groups. They may only get in seven holes and, and they both sides know that if they, if they tee off and there's a few minutes left, that that last hole could, could decide a flag, you know, that we basically have any remaining flags. And that's been popular because, you know, a lot of times our matches here are on Sunday nights, it's a school night, you know, maybe mom or dad has been out golfing during the day. It's a long day for everybody. If they know that, you know, we start at four 30 and they're going to be in their car driving home at seven and it's not going to be pitch dark when they leave or they can plan for F and B on the patio because of that. There's a lot of benefits there. So if anybody needs that, it's just a good reminder. Oftentimes if you start some matches and you get out on the course, somebody's asking you like, Hey, how do we, how do we handle this rule again? You can have a couple of things on there about, you know, what the maximum score is, um, where you can play from, how to handle out of bounds or water hazards. So, um, you know, penalty areas. Sorry, Mike Thomas. I know you're going to call me on that. Um, but I think anything like that um, could could be a good way just to kind of add a little bit of polish to your to your facility. And I've gotten compliments on it from other clubs. You know, share it on your on your league call. Hey, we're going to do this. You guys can all you know send out a word document and use kind of the same format. But it's just one more way to lessen the confusion, especially if you're doing a shotgun start. You've got kids from other clubs showing up. And they don't know really where they're going or maybe they're their pro or their coach didn't get the email out the pairings. So. Yeah. It's, um, you know, thanks for sharing some of the thoughts on, you know, those that are on the fence. And then what you mentioned about the sheet um, last year, uh, I guess it was last year we started it. Um, Claire um, has put together a Google uh, form uh, that she sends out to every captain uh, that registers uh, that provides all that type of information, you know, what cart fee might be, how early you can arrive, uh, the rules of play for the day, things like that. Um, and so that way the captains can hand it out to all their players. And then when they go to each course in the league, uh, the parents know what to expect when they get to that course. Um, so as you register for the captain, Claire's going to send you the link so that you can fill that out. And then we can share with everybody in your leagues. Um, during your league phone call. Um, so yeah, the, what you've been doing, Josh, is awesome. Uh, and uh, we've been trying to add that in for everybody else as well. And then the time limit you're talking about, I'm seeing that happen a lot um, in all my sections, um, you know, with a certain specific time limit on play um, and um, anywhere from two hours, 15 minutes to two and a half hours. For the juniors too, I mean, the better juniors, they like to see it because it, it's already putting that you know, you're putting at least the time, you know, you're putting that maybe 15 minute per hole goal in, in junior's mind. And they want to, the juniors want to play all the holes, right? They want to get a chance. They don't want to. So you're putting that carrot out there in front of them. And now maybe one match when they don't get all nine holes in the next match, they're that much more motivated to be ready to hit their shot and kind of keep moving forward. Definitely. And I just want to let everybody know, Claire just put our phone numbers uh, in the chat for everybody. Um, if you've got more questions, uh, want to talk to us about, you know, this fitting in with your facility, uh, those in your area that might be participating, um, feel free to give us a call and reach out and help us. Uh, that way we can help you. Um, and our emails are in the chat there as well. So uh, feel free to reach out. Any other questions um, at this point? Uh, Josh, is there anything else you want to share? And then I'll have. No, I just, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to be on here. I mean, uh, you know, thanks for, you know, we, we originally had this scheduled for Monday and just thought with MLK day, it'd be better to kind of reschedule. So hopefully we got a few people that couldn't make it on Monday. Um, but obviously with the season right around the corner, if you haven't registered as a captain yet, please do so. And then uh, once February one hits, let's start getting some players registered. I know, uh, John Gould's on here, Doug Ward. We want to keep being number one and being a leader in the, in the country in terms of Middle Atlantic section. So let's get those players registered. And what better way to, uh, to get, um, you know, the year started and back on track with getting a lot of juniors out there. 
And Cedric, I saw your uh, your post there. John will be back here to work tomorrow, so I'll, I'll let him know you said hi. Uh, I just want to echo what Josh has said, say thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Sean, thank you for allowing uh, Josh and I to do this for you. Um, thank you for listening to me at first and sharing some of the updates. Uh, once again, if you want to learn more about Family Cup, give me a call or go to the Family Cup uh, website. One thing I do want to stress is that uh, because we're still in pilot phase, uh, you need to be a PGA Junior League captain uh, in 2021 to do PGA Family Cup. Um, so um, get those registrations done and um, give Claire or I a call if, uh, or email if you need help with anything. We're here to help you. Um, and to help you be successful and figure out what best fits you um, and your facility. So thank you so much for the time. Have a wonderful 2021. Sean. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Doug, very much. Great, uh, great information. And uh, thanks for everybody attending.